Hi everyone, my name is Marianabel L. Boqueron and my co-members are Mark Anthony Bitong, Jelena Quintanes, Joshua Rubin, Gerald Rubin, Jericho Fuentes, Jan Axel Igunia, and lastly, Raniel Fuentes. We are here to tackle the three topics which our instructor gave it to us. And these are topic number one, types of accident in the workplace and case to prevent injury. Topic number two, fire classification, classes, and fire prevention. And lastly, topic number three is basic first aid procedures. Then, since we are eight members, we are decided to split into three teams that will handle each of the topic to discuss. The first team that will discuss the topic number one is me, Joshua Rubin, and Raniel Fuentes. So now, we are going to start to discuss the topic number one. I hope you will listen and gain some knowledge about this topic. So, topic number one is the types of accident in the workplace and case to prevent injury. So, an accident word, what does it mean? So, an accident is an event that has unintentionally happened that will result in damage, injury, or harm. Like, for example, you are just walking outside and accidentally you are um, fall or slip on the ground that is an accident so let's move on to the types of accident in the workplace the common workplace accident can include falls like like i've said earlier slips and trips, or even repetitive motion injuries like a carpal tunnel syndrome. Injuries on the job come from exposure to certain hazard or things that can potentially cause damage or health um, consciousness to works, like wet floors or electricity. So let's move on. What are the main causes of accident in the workplace? Number one, lifting, fatigue, dehydration, poor lightning, hazardous materials, acts of workplace violence, trips and falls, or stress. Let's move on to what actions should be taken in the event of an accident in the workplace. If you are injured at work, it is important to report the incident to uh, your employer as soon as possible. Your employer's initial concern should be ensure that you are free from uh, immediate danger and to seek medical attention as soon as possible. Then, this could be from a first aider or through calling an ambulance. That's all. I am going to pass it the case of um, how to prevent injury to my co-members. Hi ma'am, good day. I am Joshua Lenandi Rubin and, and my topic is about the case to prevent injuries in the workplace. Number one, incorporate a safety and wellness plan. The Foundation for a Safe Work Environment is an effective accident prevention and wellness program. The program needs to cover all levels of employee safety and health with the encouragement to report hazardous practices or behavior. My, my answer is having safety plans enables us far from vulnerabilities and hazards. Ways of preparedness must be implemented to ensure the prevention of a certain accident that may affect our lives. It's better to prevent than doing nothing. Number two, conduct pre-placement pre physicals. Some accidents are caused by inexperience and the 
inability to physically perform the position. Screening applicants is a safeguard for placement with the appropriate positions matching their physical capabilities. My answer is mastery of a certain things must be put in their field of expertise. We have different capabilities and varied abilities but always go forward where you good it ought to make yourself perfectly fit in a certain position. Number three, employees and management staff continually cultivate a safety standard among employees and management staff. Train employees about the importance of the following safety measures as often as possible. Supplemental training in body mechanics can reduce strain injuries and keep employees safe during lifting and moving. The answer is giving the staff a training enables them to have a knowledge and do their work predictably, a thing that they can demonstrate correctly in a workplace to have an awareness of the flow in their surroundings. Number four, research safety vulnerabilities. Every business is unique and doesn't necessarily have the same safety concerns. Pay extra attention to common accidents and develop strategy, strategies to keep this setback from happening. The explanation is research from additional information to create strategies and possible response to a problem. Those being aware of what you're doing leads to productivity and control setbacks to happen. And that's all man. Thanks for listening. Have adequate staffing levels. More often than not, overtime hours are implemented because of low staffing levels. Overworked employees may suffer from exhaustion and cut corners to meet or exceed output. Hiring part-time or staff could help prevent accidents due to exhaustion. It is all about having the right numbers of the right people in the right time, place at the right time. It is not just a matter of having enough staff, but also ensuring that they have suitable knowledge, skill, and experience to operate safely. Don't take shortcuts. Accidents may happen when employees skip steps to complete a job ahead of a schedule. Make sure all instructions are clear and organized to prevent Andrew mishaps in the workplace. Inspect and maintain all company vehicles. According to the Occupational Safety and Health Act, findings workplace driver accidents cost employers an average of $60 billion a year. Maintenance should include monthly inspections and repairing vehicles as soon as possible. Safety is the most important and obvious reason to inspect your vehicle. A vehicle defect found during an inspection could save your problems later. You could have a breakdown at the work at the road that will cost time, dollars, or even worse, a crash. Monit monitor safety measures. After initial training, reinforce safety measures at every opportunity. Staff meetings, supervision, and education reward employees who abide by setting standards or staying injury free for inspection amount of time. For a specific amount of time rather to ensure that health and safe safety standards are correct in the workplace before accidents incidents or ill health are caused keep keep an orderly workplace poor housekeeping can cause serious health and safety hazards the layout of the workplace should have adequate footpath markings be free of debris and stations for clearing up spills. By keeping an orderly workplace or organized, you will save time looking for things and will have more time to work on important tasks. As organized as organization can improve the flow of communication between you and your team, you can also make your team more productive. Good day everyone, I am Mark Anthony Vitong and now I am about to report all about fire classification. A fire class is a system of categorizing fire with regards to the type of material and fuel for combustion. General classification of fire. Fire is divided into five classes. 
These are A, B, C, D, and K that are primarily based on the fuel that is burning. This classification systems helps to assess hazards and determine the most effective type of extinguishing agent. Fire classes. Fire classes is a system of categorizing fire with regard to the type of materials and fuel for combustion. Class letters are often assigned to the different types of fire, but this different between territories. There are separate standards for the United States, Europe, and Australia. So, and muna sila mga and sa katabang sa pagwan sa malayo. Classes of fire. Class A. Fires including solid materials such as wood, paper, or textiles. Class B. Fires involving flammable liquids such as petrol, diesel, or oils. Class C. Fires involving electrical failures from appliances and electronic equipment. Class D. Fires involving metallic substance such as sodium, titanium, or magnesium. My name is Gerald Rubin and this is my report. What is a fire prevention? In a Tagalog is, ano ang pag sa sunog? First is electrical issue, damage extension cord, black, black electrical panel, and leaders overload circuits are flash, explosion, etc. Hard work, folding, grading, and any other activity that involve mountain metals reaching temperature up to 1000 degree or higher. Flammable materials, improved storage or handling of flammable liquid in gases and last dust insistent build up of compostable dust which can often happen in facility involving food working food processing mental processing etc and, and that's all thank you hi everyone my name is Juliana Elkintanes for today's video i am going to report about basic first aid procedures what is first aid procedures First aid is medical attention that is typically administered immediately after an injury or illness occurs. It usually consists of one-time, short-term treatment, such as cleaning minor cuts, treating minor burns, applying bandages, and using non-prescription medicine. So, the purpose of first aid is to minimize injury and future disability. In serious cases, First aid may be necessary to keep the victim alive. When providing first aid, always protect yourself and others at all times against injury or harm. Casualty must be protected against further harm or injury. Arrange for professional help to be called. Wear protective gloves. So, dapat good ni mo protectahan ng imong kaugalingon para malikayan ang sakit. Ways to identify hazards. Use common sense. Use your sense of sight. Sight is the sense of vision or visual perception describes the capability to detect electromagnetic energy when the visible range or light by the eye and the ability of the brain to interpret the visible light information as an image. Use your sense of hearing. Hearing is the sense of detecting sound that is receiving information about the environment from vibratory movement. Use your sense of touch. Touch is to feel or handle with fingers, hands, toes, a teacher to come in contact with someone or something. Use your sense of smell. Smell is the special sense through which smells are perceived. The sense of smell has many functions including detecting desirable foods or hazards. What is DRAVC? DRAVC is an acronym to describe the procedures used by first aiders when providing first aid. D stands for danger. It is to assist the situation. And R is for response. Or it is on how to check the consciousness or vital signs. A is for, for airway 
or open airway and B is for breathing it is on how to check the respiration rates and C stands for circulation or to give chest compression how to treat a minor cut or scrape follow these steps to keep cuts clean and prevent infections and scars the first thing you need to do when you get a cut or scrape is to wash your hands with soap and water so you don't get bacteria into the cut and cause an infection and if you're done with washing your hands with soap and water use a hand sanitizer and second step is to stop the bleeding put pressure on the cut with a ghost pad or clean cloth keep the pressure on for a few minutes the third step you need to do is to clean the wound once you stop the bleeding rinse the cut under the cool running water or use a saline wound wash clean the area around the wound with soap and wet washcloth don't get soap in the cut because it can irritate the skin and don't use any hydrogen peroxide or iodine which could irritate the cut and the last step you need to do is to remove any dirt or debris in your cut use a pair of tweezers to clean and clean it with alcohol to gently pick out any dirt gravel grass or something material in the cut why is it important to know the first aid procedures it gives you tools to prevent the situation from becoming worse in some situations if a patient doesn't receive basic first aid care immediately their sit situation will be deteriorate open rapidly by being able to provide basic care you can stabilize a patient until emergency or medical services arrives